Have you ever wondered how to find your artistic style? Maybe you're scrolling through Instagram or Pinterest every time you sit down to paint or draw or take photos, whatever, just to basically find inspirations and some sort of inkling of where to start and maybe just copying other people's work because you have no clue what your own style is. If that's you, in this video, I'm gonna give you the main three tips for finding your own artistic style so when it's time to sit down and paint something for a job or for yourself even, you can have the confidence to lay paint on paper or to take that photo with your own artistic style in mind. So tip number one for finding your artistic style is to copy the work of people who inspire you. Now, if you're clutching your pearls right now, and you're shocked that I just said that, hear me out, okay? There's an obvious time that copying is okay, and then there's an obvious time that copying other people's work is not okay. If you're replicating somebody's work and you're using it in any sales promotion or product, and you're making money off of it, um, or marketing it, talking about it as your own, and not referencing that you're inspired by this or that person in this painting or whatever it is, um, then that's wrong. But when you're first starting out and you are just learning the ropes and trying to develop your muscle memory, copying other people's work is absolutely necessary for developing technique and muscle memory. If you think about it in terms of learning gu guitar, for example, so many brand new guitarists are playing Stairway to Heaven, the riff to Stairway to Heaven over and over again, driving their parents insane probably. And same thing with any artist. This is taught in art school, in college. I didn't go to art school, but I, I know just from other friends that have, there are classes that are specifically you know, replicating masters artwork like Van Gogh and Monet and Degas just to develop the artist's muscle memory and technique. And so copying is okay in that sphere, but you do wanna be careful that you're not copying for too long and you're definitely not copying someone's work, claiming it as your own and earning money from that work or promoting it in some sort of way as your own. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is obvious and straightforward, but it's to practice your little booty off. You've got to, got to, got to pour yourself into this craft or hobby or whatever you're learning in order to really amp your levels up, <laughs> amp your levels up, but to actually develop the muscle memory and see results in your practice. And so if you're just starting and you're looking at the YouTube channels or the people on Instagram and you're seeing that they have this unique look to their work or how did they learn how to paint this or that in that style, they have a lot of practice under their belt. And unfortunately for you, looking at people and feeling like, shoot, why, do, why doesn't my work look like that yet? It's hard to see, especially on social media, the behind the scenes and the years worth of work that they've poured into their craft to develop that muscle memory and develop their own style. And so you gotta remember that every artist, every professional, this or that musician, whatever, was once a beginner and they had to practice their booty off in order to master their craft and develop their style. So you will have to do that too. Practice your booty off. And then my final tip, tip number three, is to make time to play. So for the longest time when I started my career as a creative, as an artist, um, this was eight years ago, I would probably say about for two to three years, I focused mainly on one thing that I could do and that was floral watercolor um, within watercolor. So floral watercolor and that was it. I didn't really branch out and paint things like portraits or landscapes because I was so focused on the work that was coming in and what I could do that I didn't think to go outside of that. But I'm encouraging you, whether you have client work or products that you're designing, or even if you don't have any source of income yet through your creativity, um, try new things. So if you're known for floral watercolor, let's say, and that's all you do, you need, you're gonna get yourself into these creative ruts and you're gonna feel burnt out and kind of stuck. And so if you really want to continue to develop and hone in your skills and find your style, you need to branch out and try new things. Cause you may pick up something from, even from doing something outside of your industry, like maybe doing ceramics for the first time or knitting or weaving or whatever that you wanna implement into your style through painting 
or through writing songs or whatever. So always be trying new things. It constantly is opening your eyes to new inspirations. And so I hope you found these three tips useful. If you want a more deep dive look into how to develop or find your artistic style, I have an episode on my podcast that we're gonna link below in the description if you want an entire thorough look at how to find your, your own artistic style. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.